today on the DIY Designer. Custom loungewear sets that are just as cozy as they are sexy. And even better, they're made based off clothing you already own. Let's go. Guys, welcome to my channel. Happy Friday, everybody. Man, I hope you're having a good week. I am so excited that you're here today because this is such a good one. If this is your first video and you're brand new, Hi, my name's Orly Shani. Welcome to the DIY Designer. I do killer DIY fashion and sometimes home decor, but today is all about fashion and it's all about cozy fashion. If you're anything like me, you've been living in sort of like the loungewear type stuff right now, but I still want to look like put together. I want to look like sexy and cool. I want it to have the right vibe and sort of be on trend. I don't want to look like I'm in my pajamas. That's not the look I'm going for. So today, what we're gonna do is make our own custom loungewear sets. Now, the reason I'm so stoked about this tutorial is that I'm not like drafting a pattern that I'm gonna make available for PDF download. I'm not telling you guys to take like 30 different measurements and draft your own pattern. What we're doing is we're shopping our own closet for clothing that we already bought, that we already love the way it fits us, and we're basically like cloning it. <laughs> we're gonna clone those pieces in whatever fabric you wanna make your loungewear in. If you are brand new, I hope you'll subscribe to the channel. I release brand new videos every Friday. Um, and I'd love to have you, have you join the fam. It's so fun, we do such fun stuff. So let's get right into today's DIY. Oh, it's so good, I can't wait for you to see. All right, these are the pants that I'm gonna use. Now, I have multiples of these pairs. You might remember them from my video where I showed you how to turn pants into a dress. So for this particular pair, I'm literally just gonna cut them open because I love the fit, but I never wear them because the print feels outdated. So if you decide to do this, you're just gonna cut all along your seams, cutting open the pants anywhere that there is a seam. Just be sure to glide your scissors as close to that seam as possible so you get a really accurate fit. Now, this particular pattern is just one piece. I'll cut two of them and that'll give me a right and a left leg, but you can see the difference between the rise. What's on the left is the front rise and what's on the right is the back rise. They should not be the same. In order for them to fit flattering, please do not just lay your pants and cut them the same. The front and the back rise need to be different for them to fit you right. Now, let's say you have a pair of pants that obviously you love and you don't want to cut apart. This is how you'll do it. Take your pants, start with your front. You're going to find the inseam. You're going to find that seam that goes all the way through and fold it in half so that it is a representation of just the front, right? So fold it in half, making sure that from the front side, all of your seams are right along the edges, super crisp. You should end up with a nice crisp curve for your front. That will be your front rise. Now lay your pants out flat, make sure there's no wrinkles, and just start tracing it all the way around. If your fabric that you're using to make your two-piece set is similar in stretch and everything to the fabric of the pants you're using, you basically just trace it exactly. If it has less stretch, you're gonna wanna add in a little bit of excess into your pattern so it fits you right. Now that little sketch that I'm doing on the, the right side is really just a guide for myself so that when I do my back side, I know where to line it up which I'm doing now. So you can see, again, I'm finding the inseam on the back, which is taller than the front. So again, you just wanna pinch that inseam, fold it right along that seam that runs along the back, fold them in half and now line it up everywhere so it attaches. I'll line it up to that side where my last pattern ended. I'll line up the bottoms, I'll line up the waistband and now trace it all the way around. And by lining it up on that sort of middle seam, right, which isn't actually gonna be a seam, I am able to create one pattern piece. And there it is. You can see my front rise on the left is shorter than my back rise on the front. Now, for example, let's say we're doing it on a pair of like jogger sweats. First of all, see how different the front rise and the back rise is, that's why it's really important that you do it this way and don't just lay the pants flat. So for this pair, I would do the same thing. I would find the seam and the front rise. If you have elastic, you need to make sure to stretch the elastic when drafting your pattern. Because obviously, if you don't, it's you're not gonna have all that extra volume. So we do the same thing. You go across the top for the waistband, across the bottom, and just give yourself a little sketch for the middle. Now, fold for the backside. Line it up exactly where you had that sketch, finish sketching everything out, stretch out your elastic, and draw. And I'll show you with a Sharpie the difference between those two patterns. They're not that different on the rise, actually. The leg is just slightly more narrow. This is what it fit like. That's the front right there. See, the rise is barely any different. A lot of them are gonna fit like this, and then you can just taper the leg, make them shorter, make them longer, add elastic, however you want. See how it looks big, but look at that. When I stretch it out, that's exactly what the pattern should be. 
Okay, so basically what you would do is cut that out. This is the fabric that I'm using. This is sort of like a stretchy knit, really cozy fabric. So what I'm doing is taking my pattern, my pant leg, and I'm just laying it on. I can cut out two pieces at once. And what you really should do, I made a mistake here, is lay your fabric face to face. So I shouldn't be looking at the right side of my fabric right now. I should be looking at the wrong side. Cutting both pieces at the same time, and because they're mirrored, face to face, I end up with two pieces that are mirrored, which means I'll end up with a right leg and a left leg. But basically, you're just gonna take your time to cut everything out exactly. If you didn't give yourself seam allowance, then give yourself that little bit of seam allowance you're gonna need, and there you go. I ended up with two pieces. So I folded them face to face, laid them on top of each other, and I'm pinning those inseam, I mean, excuse me, that front seam and the back seam. That right there is the back seam. The one I pinned first is the front, and I will just simply sew them together. I really recommend using a zigzag stitch for anything that's knit so that it maintains its stretch. And there you go. You can see what it looks like laying flat. When you open it, voila, you end up with what's already starting to look like a pair of pants. You've got a front seam and a back seam. Now we're gonna sew the inseam together. So in order to do that, you wanna line up those two seams, that way they meet together in the crotch perfectly. So start by pinning in the middle there. You can see I already did that on one side. And now I'm gonna pin the other side. You wanna start at the top, then move all the way down to the bottom. That way you ensure that at the top, it matches perfectly where the seam is, and at the bottom, it ends perfectly. Then just kind of fill in the middle with pins so that everything is held into place. You're gonna want a lot of pins, especially if your fabric is really stretchy so that it all stays in place. Now, when I sew anything like this, like stretchy pants, I like to start at the crotch seam, go down the right leg, then flip, start at the crotch seam, and go down the left leg. I think it makes it more even as opposed to starting at the hem of one pant, going all the way up and around. The only problem I have right now is that I very stupidly forgot to create fabric for my waistband. So if I were to fold this over, that's obviously that's too low, you know, that's like a little ridiculous. So what I want is to basically add another inch, which means I need a two inch strip. So I have to see if I can get that out of the scraps that are left over. Now, by the way, the reason I only have scraps is because I already cut the top, but I just wanted to edit all of the pants together and all of the top. So that's why uh, I only have scraps left. So basically all I'm doing here is I'm laying my pants out and grabbing my scraps and figuring out exactly how much I need. Obviously lining it up to the width of my pants is gonna let me know how much I need. I did have this one piece, which was pretty much perfect. It's folded in half, it gives me about that two inch extension that I need, but it's not long enough to wrap all the way around. So what I'm gonna need to do is grab another piece of fabric and basically like patch it in. It's not ideal, but it works and it will be totally fine when all is said and done. You don't even notice it. So what I'm gonna do is attach those two pieces together. So I'll show you right now kind of the idea here. So this is the one piece I had. When I fold it in to be the exact width of my pants, you can see I'm literally like three inches shy. Very annoying. So what I'm gonna do is cut it to size. Here it is, I lay it down. I'm gonna need to sew them together. So, you know, I give myself a quarter inch on one side, a quarter inch on the other, and cut off the excess. Now I will sew them together, just like that. I've now attached it and I have one circular waistband with the two seams in the back. And it actually doesn't bother me much because it almost looks like they're darts in the waistband, which is fine. Now, when you're gonna pin your waistband, you wanna pin them face to face. So leave your pants right side out, flip your waistband inside out, and kind of slip it into it, right? They're face to face. And right now, what I'm doing is I am pinning my center back seam in between those two little dart seams that I had so that it all looks perfectly symmetrical. If you didn't have that dart seam and you had one piece for your entire waistband, you would just simply be attaching the center seam to the center seam in the waistband. Pin everything together, you'll sew it, then when you flip it, that's what it'll look like. You'll then fold it down, you'll attach it to the seam that you already did, and when you fold it, voila, it's nice and neat. Of course, we will put some elastic in there. So you can see I already stitched that one thing all the way around, right? Just a simple zigzag stitch all the way around. I cut my elastic to size and I slipped it inside. Now, all I'm doing is folding down, right? Inside, folding down to that seam that already existed pin everything in place so that it's nice and neat and we're just gonna sew. Once I sew this all the way around, the elastic will be encased inside and when I fold it over, it's gonna look nice and neat and clean and it will be a waistband made out of self. You could always do a contrasting fabric 
if you ran out though, so don't worry about that. And there you go, that's what it looks like. I'm sure I can come up with a much cleaner way to finish it off on the inside, but for now, I'm digging it, it looks great. It's got some nice hold in that waistband. Okay, last thing I needed to do for this pair was just hem them, which I did. So here is that shirt I was talking about. I grabbed a sweater that I really liked the fit of and something that I thought would fit with the leftover fabric I had, which was not much. I'm basically just cutting it out all along. And you see how it has that little like notch for the sleeve? I'm just folding over my sleeve to cut all along the edge. This is how you guys would do it, again, if you don't wanna cut open what you have. You could either draft the pattern onto paper or you could just simply line it up on your fabric and kind of cut around it. That's what I'm doing on this one. And because I didn't cut it in half, I wanted to make sure it was even. So you just fold it in half, straighten up any edges that weren't perfectly symmetrical. And now I'm just kind of eyeballing a neck hole. Like I'm literally just folded it in half, scooped out the neck hole a little bit, and this is where we're at. So it's time to create the sleeves. This is the last bit of fabric I had, so I'm just folding it in half. When you're doing your sleeve, obviously make sure to do the fold where the fold is. So I had to flip it there because you see the fold on my sleeve is there and the fold on my fabric is there. So line it up. I took my fabric to make sure that I had enough to do two sleeves. So I just held my finger at the middle point and when I opened it, I actually had enough to even add a couple of inches to it, which I did. So I cut my fabric in half. Now I'm just running it all along where the seam is on the sleeve. So it's gonna be the exact same pattern as my sweater. Take the first sleeve, put it on the fabric to cut the second sleeve, and there you go. This is what we're gonna have. Those sleeves are gonna fit perfectly into those little notches, and let's start sewing. First thing you're gonna do is sew your shoulder seams. So lay your, your sweater, your t-shirt, whatever you're making face to face, and just pin the shoulder seam. I started sewing that again with a zigzag stitch, and right when I got to the neck hole, I was like, oh, uh, shoot. I probably should have folded down and clean finished my neck hole before I sewed my shoulder seam so that it would end up with a really crisp connector point in the corner, especially because this is knit. I didn't want it to get like bubbly. So what I decided to do for this is actually have the, um, have it like reverse so that you kind of see the inside. I thought it would look really cool. So I folded it down and pinned it and I'm just zigzagging it. And I'm gonna do that all the way around. Now, you can see both sides are nice and neat and now I fold them together and just sew that last half an inch of my shoulder seam and they'll connect in a really pretty like crisp V right on the shoulder. It looks really nice and it looks much cleaner. You can do the whole uh, neckline afterwards if you want, especially if you're like sewing in a binding. Now here it is. Don't worry, I press this neck hole and it ends up being really crisp and clean. It's just a little curly right now. So here is my shirt, only connected at the shoulders. It's time to pin in my sleeves. So you guys are going to lay, again, always face to face on your fabric. I'm lining up those little notches where my sleeve was with the edge of my sleeve and pin it. Same thing on the other side. Find a little edge of the notch, pin it, sew straight along that. Now you can see it's been sewn, right? And when I lay it flat, there we go. This is starting to look like a t-shirt. So I've got my neckline that I did, my shoulder seam, my armhole, and now I am just doing the little L's that go underneath, connecting our side seam and closing our sleeve. Once that's done, that's basically the structure. All that's really left to do is hem the sleeves or the bottom and press everything, and we're done with this one. So here you go, you can see I sewed the whole thing together. That neckline really needed to be pressed and kind of stretched so it lays flat. I do that, I press everything. You wanna make sure to press your pants, all the seams, so there's no like curly Q seams. Everything lays really crisp and flat. Set it to the iron setting that's appropriate for your fabric. Now this one I'm gonna do kind of fast because it's the same idea. I wanted to do a cropped pair that was a little more narrow. So you can see how the bottom part of my pants are hanging off the edge. That's because I'm making them that much shorter than my original pants. Now because this is a plaid, you really wanna look at where things are gonna go. I don't want any weird unflattering lines right in the center front. So I am lining up that center front crotch seam right in the black area where there's mainly black so that it doesn't come together in a weird way. If you wanna narrow your pants, you can do that just like I did, fold the pants over, narrow them out, and that's it. Now, for this particular pair, if you're doing something with plaid, I do not recommend cutting two pant legs at the same time. Cut one pant leg and now lay it down on the fabric and line up every single little line. Trust me, 
you need to do this. If you don't do this, once you sew them together, none of the lines will line up. It's gonna look super janky and it's gonna look cheap, really. You need to like literally go inch by inch, line up every single line and put multiple pins where every single line lines up. Once it's lined up, cut out your second pair or your second pant leg, and you're going to sew those two clothes, right? The right side is my center front seam and the back side is my center back seam. Now I only used a few pins on the first try and look at that, how annoying. Look at it, it's like off by like a half an inch. Super annoying to me. So I seam ripped open that little section and I re-sewed it together. And now, voila, it's perfect. So I learned that I literally needed to do like a pin for every single line in order to make it perfect. So now that the center front and the center back seam are done, we do the same thing. You just line up your inseam. And again, take a look at every single line, making sure that the uh, front and the back are gonna line up perfectly. And look at that. I mean, I gotta say you guys, that's pretty legit. Those lines are like perfect. Seamless, I tell you. And this is what they look like on. So they're really, really cute. I'm into them. I like the shorter cropped length. I was trying to figure out like what kind of waistband to do, but also just admiring how even my lines were. I could not believe it. So now it's time for the waistband. I'm cutting one piece that's twice as wide as I want my waistband to end up with, right? So I'm gonna line it up to my pants to see how much excess I need to cut and then sew it closed so I end up with a circular waistband. Now we do the same thing. You're going to put it inside face to face and you're gonna pin Right, this is where I was talking about if you don't have those two little notches like I did on my last one, all you're gonna do is pin the seam and the waistband to the back seam of the pants. So I sewed it all the way around and you can see it's connected, all my lines are connected. Next, I'm taking a really wide waistband because I want kind of a substantial waistband. This is gonna be a more high-waisted pair. Fold down the waistband, again, connect it to that original seam, pin all the way around and sew and everything lines up really nice. Now, the last thing I have to do for this pair is just figure out where to hem it. I'd recommend putting on both pairs of shoes you think you'll wear with them. I realized that in order to wear sneakers, I had to hem them a little bit more than I normally would have to show ankle, otherwise I would just look like short and stumpy, which I don't want. Now guys, I'm gonna. this is gonna be weird, but I'm literally just freehanding a top. So I've got scraps of fabric left and I tried to figure out what I could make. So I cut, that, that's two pieces of fabric folded together right now. I cut what's gonna be like a little like U-shaped V-neck. I knew I wanted to put the same elastic in as straps. So I lined up the elastic to figure out how wide it would need to be that way the elastic could fit inside. And I'm not gonna walk you through this much cause this, I literally just freehanded it. I'm like trying to figure it out. Of course you can use a tank top you already own as a pattern for this and it'll be much easier. To make sure that everything was clean finished, I decided to do it double so that it will be face to face and like essentially reversible. So I had to sew closed that little V-neck in the front because again, I didn't have enough fabric to cut it all out of one piece. So you can see there's a center front seam and I end up with two matching pieces just like that. They are going to be flipped face to face and sewn fully together so that you've got that nice crisp sort of line all across the top, really clean finish and you're not gonna see any hems. Anytime you sew straps in like this, you wanna sew it in at the same time so that it's actually coming out from the sleeve and you're not seeing it like stitched in. So you'll lay it in, pin it on one side, then make sure that the, the strap doesn't twist or twirl on you and lay it to the other side. You would pin both of your straps in and then pin the rest of the top together. And now you will just sew all the way up and around. And when you flip it inside out, there you go. It's perfectly clean finished, no matter where you look at it. At this point, you can sew back, like figure out how wide you need it, how tight you want that top and sew it closed. You could top stitch all the way around the top to make sure everything lays flat. I was good to go. However, it was like just a scotch too short because that's all I had left of my fabric. So what I decided to do was cut one long strip and like almost patch it in. So I just lined it up. I figured out what would be next in the pattern and it was solid black. So I cut out a piece of the solid black. I pinned in with all of the lines so that everything is nice and even. And then I just stitched it on top, like a zigzag on top. I actually liked the way it looked where there was kind of that raw edge. It's like a double raw edge. One on the top where it lines up and one on the bottom. And I think it ends up looking really cool. But basically after I zigzag this all the way around, this is done. There you go. That's what it looks like. It's done. Let's take a look at these bad boys. 
I actually model them only worn as two-piece sets, but what I'll tell you is I've already worn the leopard top with a pair of high-waisted Levi jeans and a leather jacket, the black high-waisted pants with like a cropped sweatshirt. Interchanging those pieces, I made two sets, but I end up with like never-ending combinations. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you are new, I hope you'll subscribe to the channel um, and take a look at all the brand new videos that I release every Friday. It's so fun, so make sure to click that notification bell. I love you guys. Mwah. Bye.